Hi everyone, Mrs. Milam here to read the last section of Because of Wind Dixie. So we're going to be finishing up the book today. Chapter 23. Save the sandwiches, Glory Dump yelled to me. Save the punch! I got my dog picture, screamed Sweetie Pie. She was running around, tearing them off the trees and the chairs. Don't worry, she kept shouting. I got them! I grabbed the platter of egg salad sandwiches, and the preacher grabbed the punch, and we ran into the kitchen with them. And when I ran back outside, I saw Amanda had a hold of Miss Franny Block and was helping her into the house. Miss Franny was so teetery in her high heels that <clears throat> the rain would have knocked her right over if Amanda hadn't held on. I grabbed Gloria Dump's arm. I'm all right, she said, but she put her hand on my arm and held on to me tight. I looked around the garden before we left. All the crepe paper was melted and the candles were out. And then I saw Otis. He was standing there by his jar of pickles, looking down at his feet. Otis! I hollered at him over the rain. Come on! We're going inside! When we got in the kitchen, Amanda and Miss Franny were laughing and shaking themselves like dogs. What a downpour, said Miss Franny. Wasn't that something? That came right out of nowhere, said the preacher. Woo-wee, said Gloria. Dog, squawked Gertrude. I looked at her. She was sitting on the kitchen table. The thunder was really booming and crackling. Oh, no, I said. I looked around the kitchen. Don't worry, said Sweetie Pie. I saved them dog pictures. I got them right here. She waved around her wad of magazine pages. Where's Win Dixie? I shouted. I forgot about him. I was just thinking about the party and I forgot about Win Dixie. I forgot about protecting him from the thunder. Now, Opal, the preacher said, he's probably right out in the yard hiding underneath a chair. Come on, you and I will go look. Hold on, said Gloria Dump. Let me get you a flashlight and some umbrellas. But I didn't wait. I went running out into the yard. I looked under all the chairs and around all the bushes and trees. I called his name real loud. <clears throat> I felt like crying. It was my fault. I was supposed to hold on to him, and I forgot. Opal, I heard the preacher call. I looked up. He was standing on the porch with Gloria, and Dunlap and Stevie Dewberry were standing there, too. Your guests are here, the preacher said. I don't care, I hollered. Come on up here, Gloria Dump said, her voice all hard and serious. She shone her flashlight out at me. I walked up onto the porch and she handed me the flashlight. Tell them boys hey, she said. Tell them you're glad they came and you'll be right back just as soon as you find your dog. Hey, I said. Thank you for coming. I just got to find Win dixie and I'll be right back. Stevie stared at me with his mouth wide open. You want me to help? Dunlap asked. I shook my head. I tried not to cry. Come here, child, Glory Dump said. She reached for me and pulled me close to her and whispered in my ear. There ain't no way you can hold on to something that wants to go. You understand? You can only love why, what you got while you got it. She squeezed me hard. Good luck now, she called as me and the preacher stepped off the porch and out into the rain. Good luck, Miss Franny called from the kitchen. That dog ain't lost, I heard Sweetie Pie holler to someone inside. That dog's too smart to get lost. I turned around and looked back, and the last thing I saw was the porch light shining on Dunlap and du Dunlap Dewberry's bald head. It made me sad, him standing on Gloria's porch, his bald head glowing. Dunlap saw me looking, and he raised up his hand and waved to me. I didn't wave back. <clears throat> Chapter 24 me and the preacher started walking and calling Win dixies name. I was glad it was raining so hard because it made it easy to cry. I cried and cried and cried. And the whole time I was calling for Win dixie Win dixie I screamed. Win dixie the preacher shouted. And then he whistled loud and long. But Win dixie didn't show up. We walked all through downtown. We walked past the Dewberry's house and the Herman W. Block Memorial Library and Sweetie Pie's yellow, yellow house and Gertrude's pets. We walked out to the Friendly Corners trailer park and looked underneath our trailer. We walked all the way out to the Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi. We walked past the railroad tracks and right on down Highway 50. Cars were rushing past us and their taillights glowed red like mean eyes staring at us. Daddy, I said. Daddy, 
What if you got ran over? Opal, the preacher said. We can't worry about what might have happened. All we can do is keep looking. We walked and walked, and in my head, I started on a list of ten things that I knew about Winn-Dixie. Things I could write on big old posters and put up all around the neighborhood. Things that would help people look for him. Number one was that he had a pathological fear of thunderstorms. Number two was he liked to smile using all his teeth. Number three was he could run fast. Number four was that he snored. Number five was that he could catch mice without squishing them to death. Number six was he liked to meet people. Number seven was he liked to eat peanut butter. Number eight was he couldn't stand to be left alone. Number nine was he liked to sit on couches and sleep in beds. Number ten was he didn't mind going to church. I kept on going over and over the list in my head. I memorized it the same way I'd memorized the list of ten things about my mama. I memorized it so if I didn't find him, I would have some part of him to hold on to. But at the same time, I thought of something I'd never thought of before. And that was that a list of things couldn't even begin to show somebody the real Winn-Dixie. Just like a list of ten things couldn't ever get me to know my mama. And thinking about that made me cry even more. Me and the preacher looked for a long time, and finally he said we had to quit. But Daddy, I said, when Dixie's out there somewhere, we can't leave him. Opal, the preacher said, we have looked and looked, and there's only so much looking we can do. I can't believe you're going to give up, I told him. India Opal, the preacher said, rubbing his nose, don't argue with me. I stood and stared at him. The rain had let up some. It was mostly a drizzle now. <clears throat> it's time to head back, the preacher said. No, I told him. You go ahead and go, but I'm going to keep on looking. Opal, the preacher said in a real soft voice, it's time to give up. You always give up, I shouted. You're always pulling your head inside your stupid old turtle shell. I bet you didn't even go out looking for my mama when she left. I bet you let her run off too. Baby, the preacher said. I couldn't stop her. I tried. Don't you think I wanted her to stay too? Don't you think I miss her every day? He spread his arms out wide and then dropped them to his side. I tried, he said. I tried. Then he did something I couldn't believe. He started to cry. The preacher was crying. His shoulders were moving up and down and he was making snuffling noises. And don't believe that losing Win dixie doesn't upset me as much as it does you, he said. I love that dog. I love him too. Daddy, I said. I went and wrapped my arms around his waist. <clears throat> he was crying so hard he was shaking. It's all right, I told him. It's okay, shh. I said to him like he was a scared little kid. Everything will be all right. We stood there hugging and rocking back and forth, and after a while the preacher stopped shaking, and I still held on to him, and I finally got to the nerve to ask the question I wanted to ask. Do you think she's ever going to come back? I whispered. No, said the preacher. No, I do not. I've hoped and prayed and dreamed about it for years, but I don't think she'll ever come back. Gloria says that you can't hold on to anything, that you can only love what you've got while you've got it. She's right, the preacher said. Gloria Dump is right. I'm not ready to let Win Dixie go, I said. I had forgotten about him for a minute, what with thinking about my mama. We'll keep looking, said the preacher. The two of us will keep looking for him. But do you know what? I just realized something, India Opal. When I told you your mama took everything with her, I forgot one thing, one very important thing that she left behind. What? I asked. You, he said. Thank God your mama left me you. And he hugged me tighter. I'm glad I've got you too, I told him, and I meant it. I took hold of his hand, and we started walking back into town, calling and whistling for Winn-Dixie the whole way. 
chapter 25. We heard the music before we even got to Gloria Dump's house. We heard it almost a block away. It was guitar playing and singing and clapping. I wonder what's going on, my father said. We walked up Gloria's sidewalk and around back through her yard and into the kitchen. What we saw was Otis playing his guitar and Miss Franny and Gloria sitting there smiling and singing and Gloria holding Sweetie Pie in her lap. Amanda and Dunlap and Stevie were sitting on the kitchen floor, clapping along and having the best possible time. Even Amanda was smiling. I couldn't believe they were so happy when, when Dixie was missing. We didn't find him, I shouted at them. The music stopped and Gloria Dump looked at me and said, Child, we know you didn't find him. You didn't find him because he was right here all along. She took her cane and poked at something under her chair. Come on out of there, she said. There was a snuffle and a sigh. He's asleep, she said. He's plumb wore out. She poked around with her cane again, and when Dixie stood up from underneath her chair and yawned, When Dixie! I hollered. Dog! Gertrude squawked. <clears throat> when Dixie wagged his tail and showed me all his teeth and sneezed, I went pushing past everybody. I dropped to the floor and wrapped my arms around him. Where have you been? I asked him. He yawned again. How did you find him? Now there's a story, said Miss Franny. Gloria, why don't you tell it? Well, said Gloria Dump, we was all just sitting around waiting for you two, and after I convinced these Dewberry boys that I ain't no scary witch all full of spells and potions. She ain't no witch, Stevie said. He shook his bald head. He looked kind of disappointed. Nah, said Dunlap, she ain't. If she was, she would have turned us all into toads by now, he grinned. I could have told you that she wasn't a witch. Witches don't exist, said Amanda. They're just myths. All right now, said Gloria. What happened was we got through all them witchy things, and then Franny said, why don't we have a little music while we wait for you two to get back? And so Otis played his guitar, and woo-wee, there ain't a song he don't know. And if he don't know it, he can pick it up right quick if you hum it to him. He has a gift. Gloria stopped and smiled over at Otis, and he smiled back. He looked all lit up from the inside. Tell what happened, said Sweetie Pie. Tell about the dog. So, said Gloria, Franny and me, we started thinking about all these songs we used to know from when we was girls. We got Otis to play them, and we started singing, teaching the words to these children. And then somebody sneezed, Sweetie Pie shouted. That's right, said Gloria. Somebody sneezed, and it wasn't none of us. So we looked around, wondering who did, thinking that maybe we got a burglar in the house. We looked around, and we didn't see nothing, so we started singing again. And sure enough, there was another big achoo. Sounded like it was coming from my bedroom. So I sent Otis in there. I said, Otis, go in there and see who's sneezing. So Otis went, and do you know what he found? I shook my head. When Dixie shouted Sweetie Pie. That dog of yours was all hid underneath my bed, squeezed under there like the world was about to end. But he was smiling like a fool every time he heard Otis play the guitar, smiling so hard he sneezed. My daddy laughed. It is true, Miss Franny said. It's the truth, said Stevie. Dunlap nodded and smiled right at me. So, Gloria Dump said, Otis played his guitar right to that dog, and a little bit at a time, when dixie came creeping out from underneath the bed. He was covered in dust, said Amanda. He looked like a ghost, said Dunlap. Yeah, said Sweetie Pie, just like a ghost. Mm-hmm, said Gloria. Look, just like a ghost. Anyway, the storm stopped after a while, and your dog settled in under my chair and fell asleep. And that's where he's been ever since, just waiting on you to come back and find him. When Dixie, I said, I hugged him so tight he wheezed. We were out there whistling and calling for you, and you were right here all along. Thank you, I said to everybody. Well, said Gloria Dump, we didn't do nothing. We just sat here and waited and sang some songs. We all got to be good friends now. The punch ain't nothing but water and the egg salad sandwiches got torn up by the rain. You got to eat them with a spoon if you want egg salad. But we got pickles to eat and litmus lozenges and we still got a party going on. 
My daddy pulled out a kitchen chair and sat down. Otis, he said, do you know any hymns? I know some, said Otis. You hum it, said Miss Franny, holding her, nodding her head, and he can play it. So my daddy started humming something, and Otis started picking it out on his, on his guitar, and when Dixie wagged his tail and lay back down underneath Gloria's chair. I looked around the room at all the different faces, and I felt my heart swell up inside me with pure happiness. I'll be back in a minute, I said. But they were all singing now and laughing, and when Dixie was snoring, so no one heard me. Chapter 26 Outside, the rain had stopped and the clouds had gone away, and the sky was so clear it seemed like I could see every star ever made. I walked all the way to the back of Gloria Dump's yard. I walked back there and looked at her mistake tree. The bottles were quiet. There wasn't a breeze, so they were just hanging there. I looked at the tree, and then I looked at the sky. Mama, I said, just like she was standing right beside me. I know ten things about you, and that's not enough. That's not near enough. But Daddy is going to tell me more. I know he will, now that he knows you're not coming back. He misses you and I miss you, but my heart doesn't feel empty anymore. It's full all the way up. I'll still think about you, I promise, but probably not as much as I did this summer. That's what I said that night underneath Gloria Dump's mistake tree. And after I was done saying it, I stood up, staring at the sky, looking at the constellations and the planets. And then I remembered my own tree, the one Gloria had helped me plant. I hadn't looked at it in a long time. I went crawling around on my hands and knees searching for it, and when I found it, I was surprised at how much it had grown. It was still small. It still looked more like a plant than a tree, but the leaves and branches felt real strong and good and ripe. And I was down there on my hands and knees when I heard a voice say, Are you praying? I looked up. It was Dunlap. No, I said. I'm not praying. I'm thinking. He crossed his arms and looked down at me. What about, he asked. All kinds of different things, I said. I'm sorry I called you and Stevie bald-headed babies. That's all right, he said. Gloria told me to come out here and get you. I told you she wasn't a witch. I know it, he said. I knew it all along. I was just teasing you. Oh, I said. I looked at him, close. It was hard to see him good in the dark yard. Ain't you ever gonna stand up, he asked. Yeah, I said. And then... He surprised me. He did something I never in a million years thought a Dewberry boy would do. He held out his hand to help me up, and I took it, and I let him pull me to my feet. I'll race you back to the house, Dunlap said, and he started to run. Okay, I shouted, but I'm warning you, I'm fast. We ran, and I beat him. I touched the corner of Gloria Dump's house right before he did. You shouldn't be running around in the dark, said Amanda. She was standing on the porch looking at us. You could trip over something. Aw, oh, Amanda, said Dunlap, and he shook his head. Aw, oh, Amanda, I said too. And then I remembered Carson, and I felt bad for her. I went up on the porch and took hold of her hand and pulled her inside. Come on, I said. Let's go inside. Indy Opal, Daddy said when me and Amanda and Dunlap walked in. Are you here to sing some songs with us? Yes, sir, I said, only I don't know that many songs. We'll teach you, he said. He smiled at me real big. It was a good thing to see. That's right, said Glory Dump. We will. Sweetie Pie was still sitting in her lap, but her eyes were closed. Care for a litmus lozenge, Mrs. Franey asked, passing the bowl. Thank you, I told her. I took a litmus lozenge and unwrapped it and put it in my mouth. Do you want a pickle? Otis asked, holding up his big jar of pickles. No, thank you, I said. Not right now. When Dixie came out from underneath Gloria Dump's chair, he sat down next to me and leaned into me the same way I was leaning into my daddy. And Amanda stood right there beside me. And when I looked at her, she didn't look pinched faced at all to me. Dunlap cracked his knuckles and said, Well, are we going to sing or what? Yeah, Stevie echoed. Are we going to sing or what? Let's sing, said Sweetie Pie, opening her eyes and sitting up straight. Let's sing for the dog. Otis laughed and strummed his guitar, and the flavor of the litmus lozenge opened in my mouth like a flower blooming, all sweet and sad. And then Otis and Gloria and Stevie and Miss Franny and Dunlap and Amanda and Sweetie Pie, 
and my daddy all started to sing a song, and I listened careful so I could learn it right. <laughs> 